So I was um, going out on a, a bit of an adventure. I wanted to see how long I could drive my Honda Helix before it ran out of gas. So I ended up driving out west. I just kept heading west and south. So southwest, like the airplane company. Hey. Um, anyway, I ended up passing an antique store. Um, I, I've, I've passed this store many times over the years, and I never really thought much of it. But I said, what the hell, I got really all the time in the world, let's check it out. So I went in, and I looked around, and they had a lot of really cool stuff. Um, actually, a lot of really cool stuff. Stuff that I'd want. And, uh, like, antique radios, they had fans, they had just, even had an accordion. Uh, well, anyway, so I looked at their row of fans. They had like four or five of them. And uh, I saw this one. It caught my eye because it was the most original of all of them. And it wasn't a bursted electronics fan or a McRidison. It was a Handy Breeze, and here it is. But I just love this fan. It's in Institution Green, the original finish. It's a crackle finish. Or not crackle, but I think they call that Japaning, or wrinkled finish. Um, it has the original cord that is still in good condition. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. In fact, Vex Buster right now is probably shaking his head saying, Oh my god, what an idiot! You should rip that cord out right now this instant! Well, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it. Because it gives the fan character, and it is in really good shape. It's very rare to find a, an original cloth cord in this condition. It only has a few nicks, um, and they're not... They're really in the outer sheathing, which is okay. Um, it's not like they're gonna... There's not bare wire that's gonna short out or something, or anything like that. It's not, it's not like that. But for, the, um, for those of you who haven't really seen cloth cords, I know there's some of you, I, I'm not... Uh, I'm not naive. I know some some younger people have never seen what a cloth cord looks like. Well, they um they're very difficult to 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 work with because they tend to want to remain in the original position that they were in, I guess. In other words, they're not as flexible as rubber cords. Um in fact, some of the early rubber cords are almost as dangerous as the cloth cords because they um the earlier rubber ones tend to disintegrate but a good quality cloth cord uh that hasn't seen much abuse or sunshine can be a good thing um and just so you know the the outer weave does not give way to bare wire there's actually insulation on around each bare wire and then it is run through a loom that wraps this decorative uh covering over it Cladding, if you will, but in straightening this stuff out, it's it's a little, a little tricky because if you kink it, it'll crack. And I think that was true even when they were new. But here you can actually see a little bit of the interweaving. So this cord's in good shape. I've seen some bad ones in my day. Has the original plug. This is a Bakelite plug. Uh, maybe it might even be plastic. It doesn't, doesn't feel like Bakelite. In fact, I'm almost positive it's not Bakelite. But in here you can actually see how the cord is woven together. If I can get this cover off. But there's two individually wrapped wires in there. And then they're woven together uh, on the outside. So anyway, we have the original cord, the original finish. The head badge is intact. It's all there. You couldn't ask for a better fan. So the Handy Breeze was made by Chicago Electric. This is a very low-cost desk fan. Probably a drugstore fan. Probably not. Um, just a very inexpensive model. It even has the hanging hook, so you can mount it on the wall if you wish. Um, it's just... Uh, it's in good shape. There's a little bit of, you know, patina on the finish here where it's kind of, you know, worn away. But what I like about this fan is 
just the level of detail in its construction. I mean, it's just so beautiful. It's not even that dirty. I mean, there's a little bit of dust in there. There's a little bit of dust in there. Okay. All right. So it's not perfect, but it looks like a, um, a shaded pole motor. No, it's not. I think it's a double pole motor. Or I don't know. I should uh, I should research more about what motor types are what. But in, in, in keeping up with its um, low-cost nature, it does not have a power switch. It does not oscillate. It's just a standard old bent-up fan. It's got some bent struts. We can need to straighten those out. Um, I'm just going to bend the strut forward a little bit. And it looks like the, um, the grill is not removable on this fan. Again, keeping up with the low-cost uh, theme. The grill is actually stamped. It, it's uh, the, the struts are slid into a um, into a uh, like a loop on the motor housing, and then they're crimped. So the blades may not be removable. Let's see. We're gonna test that theory. I'm gonna take out the set screw, and I'm gonna see if I can weasel the blades out of the grill. Remain cautiously optimistic, but what I want to do is clean the blades up with steel wool and WD-40. Make them look new again. And I should be, actually might be able to get it out. Just barely. Now as for a time frame for when this was made... Okay, good, I got the blades out. There we go. This is probably from the 19th. 40s maybe motor spins freely I see a little bit of up and down movement that's not a good sign it means it went a long time without any real lubrication so let's uh let's do something about it. okay here's a quick um, little trivia lesson for you guys who are new to this fan thing um, okay we have two bottles of oil here we have three in one motor oil and three in one just general purpose oil. Which one do you use on an antique motor or any motor for that matter? Okay. The answer is the one in the blue can. The key difference between these two oils is that the one in the blue can does not actually contain any detergents. The general purpose stuff contains detergents those detergents can actually loosen up dirt particles from within the bearings and actually cause bearing failure. I believe it's also a little bit heavier. So we're going to take some steel wool and spray it a little bit of WD-40 and I'm going to power the fan on and clean up the shaft a little bit. Okay, it actually wrapped around the shaft, <laughs> that's okay, let's do that again. I just wanted to clean the, uh, the exposed portion of the shaft a little bit. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is pop the cover off, or so I thought. Okay. Here's another lesson in antique fans. Um, some of these fans were actually built to be pretty much non-serviceable. They were designed to work for a couple of years, and then when they break, you buy a new one. Well, that was true even then as it is now, and this particular motor is riveted shut. And not with just regular pop rivets. They are pop rivets, but I don't have anything like that to put back, so... We won't be able to take this motor apart to clean the shaft uh, bearing ends at all. Um, but what we can do is use our non-detergent oil. Don't be deterred by the by the uh, you know low quality nature of this fan because it can be saved. Yes, it can, and it will be saved. So we're going to get that oil in the bearing and then we're going to roll the shaft around and try to get it to suck into the 
raw honest bearing. Oh wait, I'm sorry. This one actually has a felt wick that we can soak with oil and that'll draw the oil straight into the bearing for us. There we go. That's nice. So while this fan may not be perfect, it still has many, many decades of life left in it. And when I get this thing home, or, or, I'm sorry, to work, where it's going, I'm going to use this on my desk, even though it's not OSHA compliant. OSHA doesn't really go to work very much where I work, so... Anyway, um, I'm still going to use it, and... Uh, or maybe not. Maybe I'll use that little... Um, Jack Frost over there, and then I'll bring this one to work. Uh, that one to work, and this one will go on that on that desk over there. That might be what I do. But most importantly, is we need to get these bearings oiled because they haven't been oiled in 50 years, or however old this fan is. This thing's probably 60 years old, if I were to guess. Definitely a low-cost model. This is not a GE. This is a, this is a low-end fan. Truly low-end. But that's kind of what I like about it. See, a lot of these low-end fans are even harder to find because they didn't last. People who used them, you know, a lot, wore them out. So... They didn't get oiled often, and uh, they just didn't survive. So it's kind of funny how these lower-end fans are generally quite valuable. Um, I don't mind telling you guys what I paid for this fan. I paid a whopping $16. That's it. In fact, I might be going back again because they have a beautiful Zero, which is a bursted fan. Um, that I'd like to scoff up, actually. <laughs> it's in really good shape, too. Um, Bursted was one of the first truly low-end, low-cost manufacturers of, um, of appliances. Their appliances were of very low quality, they didn't really last very long. People generally threw them away after about the first couple of months or a couple of uses. I mean, they were garbage. But their fans tended to hold up pretty well because they're you know, very simple. But they're known for their resistance heat appliances. While these bearings are soaking in oil, we're going to work on cleaning up the blades. I get that oiled up there. Another word of caution, don't let these motors run very long without blades attached. Because as you might guess it, the blades are very critical for cooling purposes. They can overheat very easily actually. Burn them right up. So I'm just gonna soak my uh, my little steel wool pad, and I'm just going to lightly brush the blades, get the rust off of them. You don't want to go too crazy. You know, you want them to not look brand new, I mean, unless you do, if that's your goal. Now these are, um, they don't look painted to me, but some of them are painted. Actually, I think these might even be painted. Or they were at one time. So I don't want to rub too hard on the finish. Yeah, these have to be painted because they're steel. So they're, they're finished with some kind of a... Actually, I, I, I'm going to put a magnet to them and see. They could be aluminum, but they're probably steel because that would have been a lower cost solution back then. Yeah, these are not aluminum plates, I'm pretty sure. The magnet to them. Alright. I don't want them to look totally new. I mean, 
want it to have some age to it, you know? I just want it to look halfway presentable. Because if I do end up bringing it to work, then I want it to look good. Alright. So there's that. So, let me see what I have here. I have a good strong magnet I can use. But mostly refrigerator magnets. Let's see if it sticks. Okay. They're steel. Hey, they are steel. I just uh, I just stuck a magnet to it, and it, it, and it stuck. So they're steel painted. Blades. Yep. That's okay. Alright. Um, I just realized a huge mistake in what I'm saying. See, aluminum doesn't rust. It corrodes. And I just said that these could possibly be aluminum as I'm cleaning the rust off. Oh, man. Vax Buster's going to jump all over that one. <laughs> ah, crap. Don't feed the British. Don't give them reasons to insult you. Alright. Because they will. They're mean. Alright. Okay. There's that. Now. Let's see. I'm going to straighten the blade out a little bit. See, right now it kind of wobbles. Now let's see which blade is out of tune. I can't tell that way. I'd have to uh, put it on the shaft first. Let's slide the blade back in. Oh, you know, before I do that, I want to try to clean up this paint a little bit. Hold on just a So what I'm doing is I'm using a little bit of degreaser with a toothbrush. And it's working. It's actually getting some of the uh, grime out of the um, paint, which is wrinkled for her pleasure. <laughs> All right. Okay. See, so we don't want to harm the finish. Wrinkled finishes are just very easy to ruin. So I don't want to put too much, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. I don't want to go too hard with it with the uh, cleaning process. But it's working. It's actually working. And. Um, I'm not spraying the degreaser directly onto the paint. I'm spraying it under the toothbrush. And what I'm using is a very cheap orange greased lightning super strength degreaser. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. In just a minute, I'm going to go online and search information relating to this band to see f roughly how old it is because I'm kind of curious. Don't worry about the bearing. It'll be fine. It'll live. Jam-packed with oil right now so it should be okay. If I could tear the motor apart I would actually wash all this in the greaser. Just spray it, let it soak and then Rinse it off, dry it out, but we don't have that luxury because it's riveted together. You know? Yeah, know what I mean? Alright. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, that's, that takes care of the back of the motor. I think we're okay there. Take some Windex and try to spit shine. Well, not really. But that's a hundred percent better. Not really. It is better though. I might actually have some green touch-up paint that I can use on this. I'll have to take a look at what I 
have for paint. But, you know, that's remarkably better than it was. And now we got to do the front. Here's a better example. The cast iron base, um, I was able to spray it directly on. And uh, we're going to just hose it off with some nice steamy hot water. Then instantly dry it because it is unpainted on the inside and I don't want it to rust. But you'll see that this thing is going to look like a million bucks. And I'm done. Without ruining the finish. Or the value. We'll take this $16 fan and make it a $36 fan. Now that's progress. No, really though, 16 bucks is a bargain for any old fan. I mean, they just they tend to appreciate in value. Um, although the market is a little down, I think right now because of the economy. But you know, at the right time, a fan in this condition, just for decorative purposes, would be probably sold for you know 30, 40 bucks maybe. But I will be going back there again very soon because we got a lot of cool stuff. Um, a lot of cool stuff. Maybe when I have more money in my pocket. Yeah, I try to, you know, really limit what I'm spending on my hobbies because, you know, it's so expensive. Can do. I gotta live too, you know. Let the age just melt away. Now I gotta get it dried out. Uh, it's pretty good. Well, I did some research and I've turned up very little about the Chicago Electric Company. Other than the fact that they had merged with um, Proctor Silex or Silex, um, I didn't necessarily overpay for this fan, um, but I paid just about every dollar that it was worth, according to what I'm reading. It's not a very valuable fan. I knew that. Um, I mean, I know it's not a, uh, you know, it's not a high-end model and. You know, this is basically a hardware store or drugstore fan. You know, it's something that you'd buy, put it by your bed or whatever, put it on your desk. It doesn't even have a power switch. Um, it cleaned up nice. I really am very pleased with the uh, way it cleaned up. And we're going to hear it run. Runs pretty smooth. I mean, it's got a little bit of motor noise, but that's okay. But I really, I really love the way it looks. Now, as for age, I've, I'm thinking late 40s, um, possibly early 50s, because I know that it was around that time period when, um, you know, the consumer safety or OSHA stepped in and started forcing fan manufacturers to protect the blades from children's fingers. And this has no protection whatsoever. I mean, any kid near it can just, boom, lop off a finger in no, no time flat. Furthermore, the switch to, um, the, to rubber cords occurred during the 50s, but I'm not sure exactly what year. Um, I also noticed while, look, while working on this fan, that it cannot be recorded, ever. Because if you look at the way the, the motor is built, I mean, once again, we have a motor that is sealed with rivets instead of screws. So the only way to pull the motor apart would be to drill out the rivets and re-rivet it later on. So, I mean, that would be, that's entirely possible, yes, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> um... You know, so if the cord were ever to fray, I would turn it into a wall hanger. That's it. 
decorative piece. Sell it on Etsy where people will pay a million dollars for a worthless pile of junk because they don't know what they're buying. That's what Etsy's for. It's for the, the young and naive collectors um, who don't really understand how value and depreciation and uh, <laughs> general collectible markets work. So, for example, if I wanted to sell this boat on Etsy for $5 million, somebody would probably buy it. <laughs> I'll say it's super rare. Made in Japan. And they'd buy it. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. Handy breeze. It's handy and it's breezy. Yeah, a little bit of motor noise. Nothing serious. It's actually rattling on the... There we go. It was causing the, the board to rattle. But it really doesn't sound that bad. We're going to make one quick minor modification. I'm going to put a green felt pad under the on the base. It's missing one of its original rubber feet, so it kind of vibrates on the desk. I don't like that. So, we're going to do this. We're going to take some spray adhesive and liberally apply it to the felt here. Just like so. Okay. Then we're going to take the fan and just kind of plunk it down on the felt. And make sure you put some pressure on there. We're going to let that dry. You see I wasted a lot of felt here, but I think I paid like $5 for like half a bolt of this stuff. <laughs> Not way too much. But anyway, it's probably all going to go to waste anyhow, so let's just do that. Oh crap, that didn't soak through, did it? No, good. Once that dries completely, we're going to cut around it with a razor blade and it's going to have a new base. Woohoo! Okay, now that it's all trimmed out, look at that. <laughs> Easy to do. I should probably trim it a little better. There's a little bit of um, remnant material. But ultimately, I'm not that worried about it. While the stuff, well, the glue is still kind of soft, I'm applying pressure around the rim upward to kind of seal it against the base. So that way it uh, doesn't really fall off or anything. Cool. And now it should be a little bit quieter when I plug it in. Alright, let's do that. Making sure not to get the blades and the, the cord of the blades. That's better. Okay. Now let's do a quick quality comparison between the Handy Breeze. Oh, don't drop that. <laughs> that could shatter. I don't want to do that. Yeah, be careful with these old cords. That's why I'm not bringing this one to work. Uh, that was my original plan, but uh, even though it's not OSHA compliant, I'm not worried about OSHA. Um, neither is this one, but whatever. Um, this is America. Yeah. So, this was manufactured by Knapp Monarch in 1964, I believe. And they're about the same size blades. This one's taller because it's on a board. But uh, similar size blades, similar construction. This is, a, this is a cast pot metal, I believe. And this one is stamped steel. The um, the Nat Monarch has a very chintzy gooseneck assembly that really it, it's a, it's just a total fail. Um, I mean, really, it's it's just bad. There's no spacer in between here, so you can't really get any clamping force on the neck at all. It just kind of wants to flop around. Um, the motor is repairable; it can be taken apart fairly easily. Um, it has oil ports front and rear, um, and the blade is made of stamped 
Uh, so I believe that one was also steel. And just a very cheaply made fan, just a little bit newer. And the Handy Breeze, I think, is built better. I really do. Mainly because of the base. It's cast alloy or pot metal. The clamping mechanism is a little bit stronger. Um, you know, it puts out a little bit less air, but uh, I actually like the way it looks better, too. <laughs> And it has a cloth cord. This is the original rubber cord for the Nat Monarch, and I've added a switch to it. This is a um, a lamp cord switch. These are really easy to install. I added the switch because um, I just didn't want to have to keep unplugging it. I think it's kind of stupid. But I can't add that switch to the to the cloth cord because it was never intended for that kind of modification. Even the shaft diameter. This thing, this thing cranks. And it sounds like a hundred buzzing D's when it's at full speed. It vibrates too. Off balance. Good spin down. The handy breeze doesn't spin as fast. And it doesn't blow as much air. <laughs> it's about where it tops out. And it's, right now it's actually spinning the Nat Monarch. <laughs> kind of funny. Dueling fans. Hey, that gives me an idea. Oops. Ready? Which one's more powerful? I'm going to say the Nat Monarch wins that battle easily. Okay, next step, I'm going to shut down the Nat Monarch. And... Oh yeah, the nap wins. Totally. Hands down. Okay, now, to be fair, we need to power up the uh, handy breeze. I don't know what that proves, but I think we figured out which one puts out more uh, more bang for the buck. There you go. <laughs>